If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this fun and deeply personal episode Ooh, of Mind revealing. Pump. Revealing. Right. Look, we don't really talk about fitness in this episode, but we do talk about health. Uh, we start off by talking, uh, I don't remember, how did we start the episode off? I totally don't remember that. Yeah, was, yeah about the random. Kim Jong-un meeting, oh, with, meeting Trump. with Trump. meeting with Trump. We started with that. Justin's rodent bathroom that, adventure. Oh, oh, my God. Yes. Find out why mice are extremely attracted to Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Like this science. Is a, I don't like your theory. There's no. I don't know if it's a theory. Uh, I think it's the truth. I think it's proven. I think it's the truth. <laughs> then we get into like uh, you know being protective or jealous of your partner. Yeah, a lot of this is about relationships. Relationships. And jealousy. Uh, our relationships. Personal stuff. So we got kind of deep. Yeah. It was a fun episode. There was no direction whatsoever. It was just great, great conversation. A lot of it was on relationships, which will also benefit your health. Mm -hmm. uh, to talk about. Also, I do want to mention this month, all month long, for the entire month, the Maps Anywhere program, which is our basically our program with no equipment. In other words, it's designed to train you effectively with bands and a stick. So like almost no equipment whatsoever. It's half off. The price is 50% off all month long. We've never had a program 50% off for the entire month. So it's a huge, huge discount. Also, we offer MAPS bundles for those of you who are super serious about your fitness. You can enroll in a bundle like the Super Bundle, which is multiple MAPS programs put together and organized in a way to where you can train your body and go through the different programs for like a year. For example, the Super Bundle, that's about a year of exercise programming. So you can find MAPS anywhere at 50% off and all of our MAPS bundles and individual MAPS programs at mindpumpmedia.com. Did you guys see the monumental event? Uh, was it yesterday on Mo TV? Monumental. Monumental. No, wait, wait, wait. wait. No, I, no. Was this where Dennis Rodman? I saw something going on <laughs> of, of, of that he, whole he was thing. Like crying of that whole thing. You th that's the part that you. Dennis know. Rodman. No, no. What, his what, reaction. What are, you, what are you talking is about? This something Trump, to do with North Korea. Is what Trump I'm and fucking the, yes. the 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 chubby faced cherub looking leader of North Korea. Right. Kim. What's his name? Kim Jong. -un. Kim Jong Il. Un. 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 They, uh, they, Every time we talk about him, I, I can't help but get the movie interview out of my head. Yeah. Like, I love that. Yeah. They met, dude. They actually sat down and talked, which is the monumental. Us. Who? So Dennis Rodman? Trump, no, Trump oh, and... Trump. and, and uh, oh, well, you brought this up before. They were planning it, right? They, they were planning it, got canceled, got re get set up again. They actually met, and people don't understand like just how much of a hermit country that is. They're yeah. the most shut-off, isolated country on earth Period. Yeah. Period. Like the people there, when people escape North Korea through China, like there's this one young lady, I can't remember her name, maybe Doug can look it up. Uh, I can't remember her name, but she's this young lady escaped North Korea through China. Then she, it took her like a year just to, just to realize how brainwashed she was because she literally thought that the leader, the, the North Korean leader could read her mind the entire time. Uh, and just talking about life over there and what they're taught, like they're taught that the leader is basically a god, that Americans eat North Korean children, that like <laughs> like yeah. weird shit, like very very strange shit, and they're so isolated. Like he doesn't poop and all that stuff. Yeah, because he works so hard. Yeah, he works so hard he just absorbs all his food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can, he looks like he's full. You know somebody's looking at him yeah. going, ah, oh, but he's chubby. How the fuck out. did that happen? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, it just never got out of his body. Yeah, but anyway, it's um, for them to meet, that's a, that's a fucking insane thing. Do we know anything that happened from it yet or no? Not no. yet, but the fact that they actually met is that's a massive, massive like win. Isn't that interesting? How much coverage... Uh, All over the place. Okay, good. Yeah, but the I was other, like, a lot of times, it, it seems to me it's not getting covered. The enough. left has got to be... I, see, I don't follow any of this stuff because I don't care, but the left has got to be presenting it in a different way. The left has to be presenting it like, he's in cahoots. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what makes me laugh? He's, he's, yeah. You know what I makes told me laugh? you he's a dictator working it real soon here. He's going to try and... Anytime yeah. a, a president does something that's generally a good thing, the other side always finds a way... It like, tries to make it a bad thing. Yeah, it doesn't thing. matter if it's right or left. Yeah, right. like this report came out that... And right now, Trump's president. That's why I'm, I'm bringing him up, because the same thing happened with Obama. There were definitely things Obama would do. Not a lot, but there were definitely things he would do that were good. 
that I used to remember the Republicans would fire him over and I'd be like, oh, you know, just be pissed off at him. I'm like, how, how can he be mad about that? But like, th- like another situation was this report comes out that shows that uh, minority unemployment, it's at its lowest, lowest rate in a long time. Like, like people are just, unemployment is low, period, but especially with minorities. And so Democrats are coming out and they're like, you know, minorities don't care about unemployment because the president's disrespectful or some bullshit like that. And everybody's like, what? <laughs> yeah, course, everybody yeah. cares about that. Like, yeah, why, would, why would we not care about just that? Just clap. Just be like, yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, that's it. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Don't get so angry all Some the time. Good about, things out of yeah. it, right? Gas prices are going down because of the new policies or whatever. They're going to increase pollution. You know, they'll say some shit like yeah. that. <laughs> like, fuck. You can't win. You know what I'm no, saying? Yeah, you can't but win. this is a, this is, and you know what it is? I think it's because, I think it's because that motherfucker is just, comes across as kind of crazy and i'm not yeah. talking about north korea's president either i'm talking about trump no i know <laughs> he comes across as crazy and i and i think these people are like oh we better it'd be interesting we to better see talk how they, yeah like these other leaders perceive him you know because he goes into a lot of those meetings with that same kind of gangster like mentality he does with like any business meeting right you know what it is 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 if you're the president of the united states you're you're in a position of major power. Obviously, you've got the most powerful military in the world, but you also have the most powerful economy in the world. And like this, like the tariff situation, right? Which are it's like adding a tax on things. If there's a tariff war, theoretically, like you know, we'll hurt you more than you'll hurt us. Everybody gets hurt, but you know, you can make the case, right? You can make the case and be like, okay, you want to play this game? Sure. Well, your economy will fucking tank way worse than ours will. Mm-hmm. And you know you got to kind of play that game a little bit, right? Which it feels like that's what he that's what he tries to do. But anyway, yeah. hey, who's, monumental moment. Who's CEO of uh, Apple right now? Tim Cook. Tim, Tim Cook. Yeah. Tim Cook. Right. I think he's a mind pump listener. Why? No. You got, yeah, I think so. I think he's a fan. I'm pretty sure. Oh, he wow. is. A couple of people threw threw some DMs at me of what Apple is doing now with the iPhone. For oh, is he copying our ideas? No the 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 time the time <laughs> the time management of your what you're using your phone for. So you can you can put like restrictions on so it'll it'll shut off like when you're let's say you say I'll only one hour of entertainment on my phone, and so it it, it tracks it and then it will lock you out of your like your what? It, yeah yeah so think about it as parental guidance for your kids oh I love that you give them an iPhone and you're like you automatically just put in they got two hours of you know surfing on the web or this or whatever like that and oh then, I love that yeah right I think it's pretty smart now the funny part is I was wondering with like adults like making them more aware of their what they're doing is if it, it'll it'll be just like with counting calories like it will not matter will it just be it'll probably yeah. drive it yeah. up oh, anyways yeah. override <laughs> yeah yeah right <laughs> you need to make one where like your phone explodes or something like that it where sho- the, shocks oh, you yeah, yeah the, the punishment is zaps too big, you yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? <laughs> no, it, if you get that i mean you, you get did, an electronic phone in your hand it'd be cool if it just zapped you it, like, you're it, in the middle of like watching <laughs> like, oh shit yeah. ah. it deducts from your account yeah, yeah. oh fuck a hundred dollars oh, for another man. 10 minutes nah <laughs> Yeah, I think I'll stop right there, dude. Man. Justin, what was that noise in the bathroom, bro? Dude, that was not your normal poop screaming. No, <laughs> your normal. Poop I, was, I went to do my normal morning routine, and uh, I, I was basically I, I had like one of the most frightening experiences ever. Whoa! In the, in the, yeah. What? The, what? Yeah, yeah. So I was That's just a statement, for, especially dude, from Justin. Yeah, he's no. had some terrifying situations. Dude, no, because <laughs> listen, I just went I'm, in there after him too. You know how you you know how you take your pants down so like basically my shorts are almost touching the ground yeah and uh yeah, you're, you're in wanna, a very vulnerable state yeah because you want to be you want mobility you want air yeah you know what i mean you need to feel that yeah, you need the breeze you need everything to move See, I properly feel like, do women pull the sh- their pants all the way down like guys do i don't know because i like to go have to do some research let everything happen that's right? an interesting question when you, it is i think they might be a little bit like they pull they it like down just, enough just enough like yeah. past the knees yeah that's what i picture yeah because yeah. i go, all, I way go all the way and i have buddies that even well, take their shirt off guys have things yeah. hanging between their legs you got to open your legs really wide to let everything kind of like fall out yeah that's right has, has you ever any breathing room not Anyways. to not to derail this power stance not to derail this but the most disgusting thing that's ever happened in my life in a public bathroom is my 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 wang touches the seat ever happened oh, <laughs> i know happening? just immediate like i'm like where's the antibacterial yeah. fucking <laughs> instant instant <laughs> right away you, go, like, ah! you get checked from the doctor like yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. 
He said, Doc, I need to get in I here. I don't need any of that back Why are you out fucking around? Like, no, no, my uh, dick touched yeah. the fucking the toilet, like toilet. toilet at the local bar. Yeah, oh try explaining that. I couldn't get any sleep. Try explaining that to your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My 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 uh, my checkup came back and I got a STD motherfucker. Oh, must be the time I touched the toilet seat with my dick. You long <laughs> son of a it's that fucking, didn't happen. It's almost as bad as when the water splashes back up and Touches you right in the butt. Yeah, that's, that's fucking terrible. That's another, actually, yeah, that that cleans you a little bit. No, though, if you think about it. No, bro, it's fucking toilet I mean, water. It's gross. Touching your butthole. You might as well. You might as well have sex. Well, you just do it again. With the you do it again well, after it's with yeah, fresh you, water. Exactly. There's no. There's nothing yeah, fresh about clean. that water. Sure it is. You could drink out of that. I think they did. I think no, no, they no, did no. a test like that. With no, the, you could drink out wow. of the tank. I wouldn't. I would recommend <laughs> it. Yeah. Adam's confused. Yeah. Not the bowl, dude. You <laughs> never drink out of the bowl. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the tank yeah. in the back. Yeah, I've been doing it wrong bowl. this whole time. Oh my god. Adam's like, if there's an earthquake, babe, we don't need water. I read somewhere you could drink out of the toilet. Oh, it's disgusting. I'm gonna bring it back. So I, I'm, so I'm sitting in this very vulnerable state, right? And I, it comes time to wipe, and I'm going to do my thing. And I look on the ground, and I see a mouse. And, and the mouse, and, and and I was like, oh, shit. Like, it just like, threw me it off. You? Like, I just stood up and, like, was reaching back to kind of wipe. <laughs> and so it got <laughs> me in a really, like, his, his, <laughs> his, his positioning. It was like, it, I don't know. Wipe, it, wipe weird. Yeah. <laughs> You're that's, like a monkey. That's how a girl might. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. I can't do. I can't yeah. like that's back, animate. Wait a minute. Like, what I was back doing to front, sitting that's down. Back to front right Hold on a second. No, I don't do back. Hold on a second. Are front. you going like, between like the this. legs, or like you're this. around the back? Listen, of the leg? this is how I was trying to like yeah, yeah. Oh, no, mimic dude. it from that angle. It doesn't work. I'm gonna do like this. So okay, okay. Because like it looked like you're going between the legs. Yeah, that's why I saw. I saw this. I was like, whoa, bro, that's back to front. You're gonna get bullshit. Yeah, you've been doing that wrong. I know better. Okay. I'm not giving myself a yeast infection. Oh my god. Anyways, so I. So I'm going back, like, and and I see it getting like right next to my feet, and I was like, "What a brave motherfucker!" I was like, what the fuck's going on? And I was like, "Oh shit!" And did you stomp him? It went up my leg. Oh shit! Oh shit! Yes, it climbed. It up climbed your leg? up my leg, and so I just was like, "Ah fuck!" I almost fell like on my head because my feet kind of went out, you know, because ah. I, I felt I felt it crawling on my leg. And, and you have no one. You, it's gonna go up into. Okay, not. It doesn't stop there, right? So, like, I had my 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 shorts were down, and so it got caught like in my shorts, and so I'm like fucking stomping. Shut your face! It just happened. Yes, and it was like in my pocket of my shorts, and so I threw my shorts off. I was butt naked. <laughs> <laughs> there was a fucking guy that was in there. I was like, oh fucking, what is this? You know? And this guy was like, had no idea what I was doing, because I wasn't like, there's a mouse in my shorts, and yeah. I'm fucking freaking out. You know? All he hears is, what is all he, this? Yeah. All he, all he hears, so he must uh, have been That's like, your penis, sir? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm like, he's like, oh, oh my God, that like, came out of me. He's like, you, you know. have Mexican food? <laughs> Bro. Yeah. So I how'd was, you get it I out? was doing the Mexican hat dance, dude, just trying to fucking stomp, and um, I, I, I basically was like, <laughs> I, I backed off and I'm like butt naked, just like looking at my shorts, and then it it ran off. What? You could have had a pet. I know. <laughs> you could have saved him. Wow, that's a brave. Hold like, on a second. Put it back on. I'm impressed with this mouse because that is a mice don't usually do that. They're scared. Yeah. But he was trying to be your friend. He was he was going for it. You know what I think this mouse? You know what I think that what's going on here, Doug? Attracted to your smell. No, I think <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to burrow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, Ugh. what if it's like those movies where like one of your like friends or something dies and then their soul goes into an animal and they're trying to communicate? Oh it's my God. Me. <laughs> Me, Fred, ah, you're like, like, stop get on the him. fuck off me. I was like, punt kicking it. You no, know? you know what, dude? So I'm looking at Doug right now because Doug said that he's a couple times now seen a mouse in the facility in the supplement in the room where the oh, fucking organic are. We're definitely supplements are. infested. Like, I, it's, I it's think, bad. I think this motherfucker's been eating the green juice and shit and just feeling oh strong. Oh, my God. Is that, dude. Did we you ever have a mouse hilarious. eat? You ever, was, you ever seen it? a mouse eat supplements? Because yeah, yeah. I've had that happen before. It must be the time of year because it was yoked. this time last year when we when we saw one right the first time when we we had the the, the visitor. Well, so here's a here's we had a, Tom. So yeah. here's a here's a story, right? We caught him and, and threw the last one. Okay, out. you know Twenty Four Hour Fitness on Santa Teresa, right? So yeah. I was there and they had that you know that back room with the supplements or whatever. Right, right. We saw a mouse in there once and we fucking emptied everything, tried to figure, couldn't find where the son of a bitch was. But we would find periodically protein bars and powders and creatine. Creatine powder get eaten. Like this little motherfucker was eating supplements. Jacked. 
<laughs> comes <laughs> out just jacked. Fast dude. forward, dude. Fast <laughs> right. forward. Turns into a rat. One of my friend desk people, one of my friend desk girls Rabinous. is back there. She starts screaming out of her mind, runs out, closes the door. There's a fucking massive rat in there, she says. So I go in there. And this rat was definitely on some shit. Like, it wasn't a natural <laughs> looking rat. And I think it was the same one. Let's ex- explain splinter. Eating the creatine yeah, and all that stuff. That's what I think. <laughs> and we ended up, we caught it. We finally caught we it. You get some turtles. So, but uh, this one right here, this mouse that the reason why I brought Doug up is because Doug set out traps. And on two separate occasions now, the, the whatever the treat is on what are you putting on the trap by the way shave coconut from Thrive Market <laughs> <laughs> shameless plug is that is today commercial for Thrive no oh, I'm, not, I'm just giving them a little oh extra. that also, would have, this would have been a good day to do a Thrive yeah. okay. commercial so <laughs> doubles so as rat bait so th- twice the the bait was gone yeah, yeah. it's not good rat bait I think I think no he likes it he I think takes it, it I think it. it's too light Doug. Yeah, no, we get some heavier stuff. Yeah, you need some heavier pressure. Yeah, are you doing? Is this the old school traps, the snap ones? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The humane ones. What yeah. I found, <laughs> this is, honey, this works well because it's sticky. I think those are considered humane. I think the ones where they say they 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 trap them with the glue. Yeah, is the not, glue is. Not, oh yeah, that's not horrible. Humane. That's a horrible way to yeah. go. Why is it? I don't understand the uh, because it's quick. So the 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 snap it breaks. The snap, their no, I, I get them, why that right. is supposed to be humane. Well, because they have to they, they like eat their arms off and shit because they can't you know get out of it. It's glue. Oh, they get and their mouth gets stuck down and on it. And they scream the whole time. Yeah. It's like, ah! Yeah, dude. That's I have, fucked up. I have a it's bad, horrible. I have yeah. a bad experience with one of those. Yeah, I had I did oh, that really? one time. Yeah, yeah. dude. Because I'm not, look, I'm not- You a, know what's funny is the people who probably do those probably think it's the more humane way. They're like, oh, I don't want to snap him with a you know, wire, break yeah. his neck. Yeah. I'll put him in some glue yeah. and then I'll throw yeah. him away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and I'll have a no, talk with him. That's more fun. Let him free. It's like drowning him, drowning somebody. It's still waterboarding. Dude, I had a mouse in my house once years ago, and that's what I did is I got the glue traps because the, the exterminator recommended them said they're super effective <laughs> they work bro <laughs> you ever hear a mouse scream mm-hmm. yeah it's okay mm-hmm. middle of the night my mother-in-law just freaking <laughs> hit me up the other day to come over to her house because and it was so like eerie I come she's like I'm, could you get the mouse out of my he was like back in behind where pots and pans are and she's been trying to track him and you can hear him just <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, oh god. Yeah, oh, bro, I don't mind high. getting a dead one out, but getting one that's like screaming is just oh, a little it's weird. Terrible. Right? Uh, no, I had it. He got caught in the middle of the night. I hear screaming from this little thing. I'm like, oh shit. I wake up in the middle of the night, go down. There he is. So I'm like, now what? I have to kill him. Like, what do I do now? I can't rip him off this glue. And if I set him out, he'll come back. So I'm like, how do I kill him? I had to think of how to kill him. So my idea was you get a hatchet. No, my idea. <laughs> relax. That's what I would do. Jesus Christ, <laughs> Justin. No, my idea was handle it, dude. My idea was as I was gonna like squash it, like just compress him until he couldn't breathe. So I got a shovel. Oh. I brought him outside and I pushed down on the shovel on top of it. Oh God, dude! Ugh. Like all pressure. Well, on I figured. Like, I'm his, thinking. It's like popping. I'm his thinking zit. he'll pass out and then die from lack of oxygen. Those motherfuckers, you can't squash them. I, I'm no, pushing yeah. down, and it, I come, he's still alive. I'm like, oh my god, dude, what do I do? So I left him outside overnight, which was bad. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, oh, a cat, oh, hopefully, oh. A cat get him. Yeah, no, no. Oh, he he, he, comes out. he was yeah. dead the next day. Yeah. But <laughs> fuck, man, that was a, that was a, oh, that was an awful. Because yeah. I'm not, look, I'm not like super, like I love animals, but I'm not like a super animal I don't love rights vermin, person. Though. But I don't like killing them. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. if I'm not going to eat it. You know, if I was going to eat the mouse, maybe it wouldn't have been a big deal. Ugh, yeah. Ugh, yeah. Gross. Not but on anyway. My, not on my top. List, but what no. we should do is get a cat. Yeah. Let's get a studio cat. A studio we, cat? We yeah. I think that's a good idea. Get a little badass cat yeah. that lives in this. That actually is not it's a bad idea. Spray. It's not a bad idea, as you say. Do you guys like cats? No, I'm allergic. No, that's my problem. I can't stand them. Would it be bad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if we get a hairless one? No, yeah. dude. It's just shit. Plus, there's something about like, I'm a dog guy, right? So yeah. just have, having a cat roaming around here would be weird. I mean, you uh, dogs are you, certain terrier breeds. We're just putting a target on our back if we do that. Yeah. For what? I don't know, dude. Just I would make fun of you guys if we had a well, cat. If we had a cat, yeah, we already have perfect. a guy with a man button. You know, we got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, right. Perfect. I got a cat too. Come on, yeah, yeah, people like really what? think of our image. What's going on? Yeah, what's yeah, going on yeah. over at Mind yeah. Pump? I've never had a cat. I feel like they're cool. <laughs> no. What if we get one of those big uh, cats? Maybe if they shoot lasers out of their eyes. Yeah, no, that would be cool. Call, like a like a bobcat. Calm down, huh? Like a bobcat. No, I don't think you can have a bobcat. You can actually. You can buy and own a bobcat. Yeah. So so I'm talking about the big. What are they called? Service. Oh, there's a name for them. Uh, they're like these Egyptian looking. They oh, look like yeah. they look like little fucking panthers. Yeah. Have you seen them? Yeah. yeah John Jones had one, right? Yeah. yeah I think. 
I, I've, I've seen those. They're wild. Yeah, you can buy a bobcat. Yeah, you can get a. Some states will let you even have like a little, uh, like a little tiger, dude. You can do that in certain. I think Arizona. I looked this all up back when I was actually th- considering this. Serval. <laughs> you look you, like you'd be an exotic animal guy. I would, dude. Yeah. I would have some like that. Okay, look at this cat. This is the one that you could buy. It's called a serval. Serval. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Look at that thing. It's like a little leopard. Tell oh. me that wouldn't be a badass little animal to have in here. And that's big. That thing's like this tall. Yeah, I could go with that. Look at that. That's cool, because that's tough. Yeah. That could probably eat a dog. Yeah. Yeah. He'd be cool. It might bite us. If you had a cat in here, he would have to be like a he, like yeah. a vicious cat. Yeah, he'd have to like, <laughs> just, like just shred like, things. Like, we're not getting like a little house cat that probably wouldn't even be able to get the mice. Oh, uh, uh, really? We need we need like a cat, like a- Yeah, but dude, we got a lot of wires and stuff, you know? It's just going to chew its no, way through shit. Oh, man. Here's the cat that I would get. You guys are fucking- You guys are all mean and shit. Here's the one I want. Look at this little bastard. Oh, <laughs> That's cute. Do you look at that? He, no. The, the animals you like are- <laughs> What do you mean no, dude? That's so cute. He looks like a, a little- He's got like a little smashed face. Yeah, he looks like a little teddy bear, dude. Uh, no. It's a flat face. Look, look, up, look up rag dolls. A rag doll? That's what I- I used to have a rag doll. I, I, did I tell you the story on that? I bought this rag doll from New York. A thousand, so you've owned cats before? A, a cat. I had one cat one time. This, this the one was, that died? Yeah. Thousand uh, dollar pussy from New York. Wow. wow. Right? And he only lasted- You know, like, if you Google that, you won't get a cat. When you do ragdoll, no. If you if you Google thousand dollar pussy from New York, yeah. <laughs> a cat won't, won't yeah. direct you to some like obscure strip club. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> he was a cool cat though. He was a really cool cat, but I, that's when I found out that uh, I was allergic to him too. Yeah, you get, so, the sne- you get sneezes. Oh, bro, it was out of control. Out of control. Never. Why'd you Why'd you kill it? <clears throat> I didn't kill him. Oh, my bad. No way, dude. You that, said it. That'd be I'm irresponsible as fuck. Spent a thousand dollars on a cat to yeah. strangle it and kill no, it. No, you said it yeah. choked or something, right? Yeah, it had like so the because the it was a pure these purebreds. It's one thing about purebred uh, animals is like they always have like these issues, right? Mm-hmm. And so I can't remember what the the vet said that he had, but he had like an enlarged heart. And it ended up, he ended up flooding his lungs full of fluid and ended up like drowning. Shit. I found him like barely breathing and rushed him there. And like by the time I rushed him there, he was, he was damn near done. And then mm. they, they, then they, they told me that they could revive him and try and keep him on oxygen. And how, was, how long did you have the cat before that happened? Only like six months, dude. Oh shit. Were you attached? Yeah. It was just getting attached to him, dude. Like he oh. was, in, and they're, they're, the breed's up. really cool. So if they're a rag doll of cat, if you're a cat person, it's, a, I think it's a cool cat. It, you can, in the way they're called rag dolls, you can grab them. Like they just, they're chill. And they follow you around like a dog. They're more oh, like. Oh, I want one of those. Yeah, that's what I told you. Look it up. Look at look at them. I did. Yeah, if they act oh, yeah. like dogs. You know, they're cool. They do. Like he would he would actually come into this. So I used to have. I'm gonna bring a cat in. Fuck you guys. Because <laughs> for sure you won't kick him out. I know you guys. You guys are big hearts. You like big teddy bears. I'll bring a cat in here. You're not gonna say oh, shit. Gucci goo. You're not gonna say shit. <laughs> I want to get one of those. I think like, even if we had like cat a, toys, even if we yeah. had like a small dog in here would keep the. Keep, I'd rather have that like a little like a little French bulldog in here would be cool. You just want another dog. I do. Dogs are a lot of work, dude. And then we can't go on trips and shit. No, we make, yeah, we, yeah. we make some of the staff take care of it. Of it. That's kind of like, oh, that's like a good the, idea. Like we'll, the staff dog. We we'll use the staff if we don't make them take care of shit. Exactly. Right. It's true. Yeah, no, I don't want the responsibility of walking it and training and stuff like that. I just want them roaming around. Mm. Mm. You want a French bulldog? Yeah. He's going to shit on their lawn. Yeah, and I don't think French bulldogs are no, great. We train them. For, we crate them first, and then we train them. Where I don't think Frenchies are good for uh, for mouses. Mouses, no. Ma- I think, mice. I think, I think, Who is it? I don't think it's, it's mouses. Terriers, right? Terriers. Terriers are good. For yeah. So mousing. like, like a Yorkie would actually be good. God, you and your weird dogs that you like. Oh, what's you so like weird all, about you like all the chick dogs? I like terriers. Huh? You like the chick dogs? I like small dogs. Yeah. Well, small French bulldogs. Small. I love French bulldogs. Mm. I just don't see a French bulldog being a, a good hunter. No. I don't think we actually need him to hunt. I think just the dog being present is enough to scare him. Uh, the, That's the not mice. true. I don't dude. think it's scared, bro. It it's went on my true. leg. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is not a scared uh, batch of mice. It's He's going to call with. the mouse. Is going to call the dog. That's bluff. something about you. <laughs> it's, 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 it's something to do with you, man. You know what it is? Just, you know, no, I just, it's his scent. I figured, no, it is. It is. You know why? What does Justin eat way too much of? <laughs> cheese. Yes. Yes, bro. Your shit is, puts off a cheese odor, bro. Uh, Did you no give it? Way. That yes. was not that was not what happened. Yesterday well, I, I yesterday I caught him when we were eating the protein ball. I didn't say anything to you. What guys. happened? I didn't tell you. We all go to Luna all the time, right? Yeah, I said add cheese. Yeah. yeah. Well, right, which is totally normal. But I look over at him. So if you look at my bowl, like I kinda put a little bit of cheese in there, mix it in, just so it gets a little cheese flavor in there. Okay. I look over at Justin and he's eating spoonfuls of cheese. By yeah. itself. By itself. <laughs> 
<laughs> just I look it's over its like its own there's, portion like, of there's, the plate. I was like, there's no steak or bean on that. That's just a like no, a, I mixed it. Just a spoon of cheese, dude. <laughs> You're a liar. <laughs> I'm not. You're a liar. <laughs> Did you have a cheese poop? <laughs> I always have cheese poop. Uh, that's exactly that's exactly where the mouse came the, from. I know the mouse was like, I've never. That's yeah. the best cheese I've ever yeah, smelled in my exactly. life. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, you know, in his mind, Screw bro, you mouse. already stay in the air. Right? When I come uh, in there, fucking, I can always tell uh, you were in there. Nah, so he's so like, bullshit. dude, yes, that's yeah. what his little primal mind is like. Yeah. Okay, do I take this risk? I've never smelled that he's much like, cheese before. He's like, this is the closest. Do it. Do it smells not? cheese heaven. <laughs> it smells uh, like cheese heaven in here. Uh, he found out it was cheese hell. He was going for your butthole, dude. <laughs> he was trying to burn. That would have been. You would have had a. What's that guy? Who's that one actor that that rumor that he had gerbils stuck in his butt? Yeah. Who was it? Was it Richard Gear? Richard Gear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So hey, he, are he you about gerbil. to do a Richard? Gere. Justin, are you current on Billions yet? Yes. Oh, the season finale. Shit. Wow, dude. That wasn't the finale. Yes. Was it? Yeah, it's over. It's no, over. really? That was, that was it, dude. Season finale right there. You know, like, uh, that was crazy and, like, the, the way that it all, unf- I don't know, Sal doesn't care. It's okay, you guys can it, keep talking. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> dude, read. like, Taylor's role in that, it was insane. Yeah. Yeah, how that all played Such out. Such a great show. I, yeah. I, 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 Westworld, I, I'll tell you what, though, Westworld, the last one, did you see that? I know, I'm behind one oh episode. Oh, my God. Best episode I've seen on TV. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, man, you got me all excited to watch. That. Catch, catch throw it. that out there. It, it was like... It was super like deep and intense and and epic. Dude. So two totally different shows, but in my opinion, right now, two of the best shows on television right now. If you're yeah. not watching Billions or Westworld, you're wasting part of your life. Mm. Yeah, yes. I, I watched uh, Jersey Shore. Yeah, <laughs> I did. That's why we, I did, bro. Yeah, we'll just keep talking. That's my really... cousin was talking all about that this weekend. He's like, dude, it's so good. It is, bro. It's ridiculous. He's like, if you like the original, so the one, last it's so good. The last episode that I just I watched, Vinny's mom, and so Vinny's mom is my favorite character. She shows up. She's only showed up once or twice, but she's my favorite character because she's the stereotype of the overbearing Southern oh, Italian right. mom, like stereotype. Like cuts his crusts off and everything. Cuts his food for him. She shows think, up, does his laundry. Do you think when they were they were uh, casting for it? Do you think they like looked for that? Of course. Yeah. I don't know if they looked specifically for that, but they probably saw this. No, like, that's oh, what I mean. Like, like exactly. Like yeah. each each character. Do you think like oh this is perfect? Like, Dude, there are stereotypes that are true, man. Like and and that's definitely one. Like I'm watching well, her. If and it's I'm true. Like, is it a stereotype then? Uh, yeah, mm. because it's not true for everybody. Well, right, yeah. but there's a, there's some the true generalization. Truth. And then yeah. his uncle Nino was. What coming. are all the true stereotypes you know about? About what? Just what are all the true stereotypes you know about? I can talk about my culture for sure. Yeah, well, uh, you, is it, it's racist <laughs> if we go the other way. Yeah, for sure. It why, is. Not? Yeah. Well, in, <laughs> why not? We're in. Why not? We're in. We're gonna do a whole episode on <laughs> stereotypes. What we, yeah, what we think about other people, other races and cultures. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> well, you we can start with our own first. Yeah, start with our. No, you like know, Mexicans definitely park their cars on the on the grass. Do they really? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, they do that. Uh, now what? That's what a hillbilly they, thing and they, too. Though. And they barbecue in the front front yard your, with drinking Corona. What's yeah. fucking happened? What side of your family's uh, the Mexican side? All the all the so all the women. So my grandmother was full, and then they all married like uh, white white men. So it's 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 wa- a lot of it's washed out down to me. I'm I'm only like quarter right. Mm-hmm. So. But uh, yeah, all the women married, and it's just cousins and uncles and friends and stuff. So when you go to like family stuff, do you hang out? You can hang out with like your Mexican side. I don't. We don't. Remember, my family didn't didn't connect that much with. Okay. uh, Yeah, when I was a kid, I didn't get. I didn't really hang out with a lot of my cousins and and family members. That's just that's Mm -hmm. just my own experience growing up around other Hispanic families and stuff and being around it is just it was a common theme that you would see like okay that's just totally Mm -hmm. normal and okay to park Mm -hmm. your car on the lawn. (laughs) Like this, I get it. That's cool. Yeah, we ate a lot of Wonder Bread and mayonnaise. Apparently, did you? <laughs> did Gosh. you? Really? Oh. <laughs> I just can't. It's actually That's really like, good. Yeah, is actually. that a stereotype? I don't know. I like mayonnaise and Wonder yeah. Bread. No, I mean the stereotype of the overbearing, you know, Italian mom is. I mean, there's a lot of fucking truth to that, dude. Especially with their boys, like you're like a little prince in the house. Mom does everything for you. Wipe your fucking mouth for you. Get yeah. your clothes out for you. Make your bed for you. Clean your room. But it's also like nobody's good enough for you. Mm-hmm. God forbid you date a girl, and you know, like there's this one, there's this one comedian, and he's not very well known, but he's hilarious to me because he's Sicilian, and his family's actually from the same town of Sicily that my parents are from, and all of his skits are around, you know, that those stereotypes. So they're hilarious because you know I see a lot of truth in them, and uh, it, you know he does a lot of these types of skits where his mom, like he did one where. You know, the title of it is when you tell your mom your girlfriend's cooking is as good as hers or as good. <laughs> oh, God. And she gets all pissed off. And how dare you tell me, you know, and whatever. And it's a true. It's such a true. 
It can, it can I, be true. So it's, that's kind of common in the Hispanic culture too. It, it's my all the all the men are like the the men are worshipped and the women are my, like my sisters and stuff like that. My gr- my grandmother totally spoiled me more than the rest of the kids. And my mom, my mom's relationship with me, you can see it. And I didn't notice this until I got older. Like it, she, it almost seems like she's competitive with my girlfriends mm. to the point where I don't know if I shared this on the show before. This just happened like two years ago. And, uh, my mom, my mom is an amazing cook and, uh, Katrina has li- literally became an amazing cook since we've been together. Like she wasn't a ma- she was, was not a, a major cooker when we first met, but she's, she's learned to cook really, really well. And she cooks amazing now. And so, you know, like I feel like up until up until this point where I'm talking about like I never really talked about Katrina's cooking before until now. And so I can tell my mom has this like competitive edge. Well, just a couple Thanksgivings ago, my mom was in town and it's tradition. My mom always either for my birthday or Thanksgiving, she makes this like bomb cheesecake. Right. Well, Katrina knows that. And so instead of making me the same cheesecake the same recipe as my mom to where it's like competitive she made me this like oreo cheesecake and it was different recipe everything like that and it was amazing it was really really good right and my mom came into town just after that right for the holidays and she'd seen it in the in there and i'm like oh yeah no katrina made this oreo cheesecake god it was so good and my mom was just like oh like like you like it better than your your religious? I was like, well, I don't know if it's a, a better thing. I just really like it. Oh my god! And Especially so, if you're next to your girlfriend and your mom. Oh no! I guess yeah, this yeah, gets yeah. worse. What am I saying? No, this gets worse. So, my mom, like Man. the next day, I, I think I was at work or doing something, and I come home, and my mom had made her cheesecakes. So now I've got like two cheese. I don't even eat fucking cheesecake that much anymore. You know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. it's like one slice. I'm good, right? My, so now I got two like full cheesecakes in my my refrigerator, and my mom's like constantly like. Have some cheesecake. Have some cheesecake. You know, wanting to serve me all the time. Like after, I'm like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. But I'm like, okay. I can tell my mom wants me to have some of the cheesecake. Like, okay. So I have some of the cheesecake. And Katrina's in the kitchen, and my mom is serving me in the living room her cheesecake. And she's like standing over me while she's eating it, and she's like waiting for me to eat and then tell her. And she's just like, so which one do you like better? Oh no. And I'm like, Katrina's in the kitchen, and my mom is standing right there. There's no right answer. Oh, you know what? I looked at her. I'm like. Really? You really are going to ask me that right now? Are you serious? <laughs> like Katrina's standing right there in the kitchen. Like, why would you even put me in that position? And my mom's just like, do you not like it? I'm just like, oh my God, dude. I can't yeah. believe that she would yeah. do See, that. See, you know what the problem is with me is that- if Sabotage. The problem with me is, and my, my girlfriend would totally understand this. So I, I love the fact that she's an understanding woman. If my mom asked me that in front of my girlfriend, I'd be like, mom, yours is the best. And I'd give her a big kiss and hug and everybody would have to be and cool with give that. give Jessica the wink. And then yeah. afterwards, I'd be like, babe, yeah. just be cool. Yeah. Right. We don't want yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? to, you know, whatever. No, it's, um, I mean, my mom would, one time my brother, I'm going to rat him out. He's going to love this. He was probably, here's the thing too about uh, the stereotype about my culture that is can be true. Like you don't move out until you get married. So- if I was a single 40-year-old dude, I'd be living with my parents. Like that's just and it's not a thing. Like nobody trips over it in our culture. You just do it. And your mom still does everything for you. So literally she'd be folding my clothes for me, washing my stuff, cooking dinner, doing all that stuff for me, right? Which can be if you're not inside the culture, you can definitely come across as a massive mama's boy and understandably. <sighs> so my brother was like 20 He was like in his mid 20s still living at home and we would laugh and I'd be like, dude, why don't you get your own place? You make a lot of money or whatever. He's like, why? Dude, mom does everything for me, cooks dinner, I got great dinner. <laughs> yeah, there's Something no goes, incentive. Yeah, and I'm like, I can't kind of kind of can't blame him, you know? Right. So one of the things that kind of convinced him to leave, <laughs> he was he was in his room and uh he was uh he had his headphones on, he was watching porn on his computer. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom just opened the door to clean his room. <laughs> he was, oh, he was, no. Yeah. Mid, mid-stroke? Yo, dude, he was sitting facing, oh, fa- man. No, facing, facing the computer. Oh, so dude. I don't think she got a shot oh, of the him. horror. I don't think she got a shot of him because I think his back was to the door. Yeah. But she could see what's on the computer screen. So she opened the door and then closed it real quick. And he kind of heard the door close and he turns around. And he's like, uh... Then he afterwards he's like I don't know if mom and then afterwards he talked to my mom and he's like did you come in my room she's like oh I you know I closed it real fast I'm sorry I didn't mean to disturb you <laughs> he, moved, he moved out after that I've never had some of that the closest thing I had happen to that was when I was in <clears throat> when I first moved to San Jose I lived with my grandmother and you know I had set my my the I, when I first moved here the idea was to come finish my kines degree and so I had like converted the room into like this little office. 
Uh, and I just got a new laptop. It was all set up to my speakers. And so I have it all set up and my, my door, my bedroom door is open and I'm just going through my emails and I open up an email that my buddy sent. And this, I remember when this, this became a thing and it was going around and popular. I didn't know it when I opened it up, but I open it up and it locks your screen. Oh, and it's really loud. And it's really loud. And it's saying, I'm looking at gay porn. I'm looking at yeah, gay yeah, porn. Yeah. It's all these dudes like sucking dicks. Oh and my God. <laughs> And my grandmother just was coming to walk in no! at the same time. And it's like, and my screen is locked and I'm like trying to get it How off. do you explain that? I know. And to your grandmother who doesn't know anything about even My grandmother doesn't even know how to, what email is at this time. You know what I'm saying? Like what? what's email? And like trying to explain that to her. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. So I'm sl- slammed. Did you have a conversation with her about it? Well, I, well, yeah. I mean, I talked to her afterwards. It was a prank that my buddy did. And she got it and everything oh, like that. But God. the initial moment when she walks in that happens. I mean, I'm sure I... <laughs> turn bright red and freak out <laughs> you know and for the first like three minutes you're just trying to delete out of it and back out of it like i'm not thinking i have to like unplug the computer but it was one of those pranks that it literally locks up your computer you yeah. can't escape out you can't just delete it or that it's like locks on the screen for like a minute or two dude i got caught Sorry. i got caught this is when i was married i got caught by my ex she walked in <laughs> in on me mid you know session or whatever and all she does is she looks at me and she goes ew and she walked out yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, fuck, man. Yeah, I, feel, I feel dirty. You just yeah. killed my boner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I don't get deterred that easily. <laughs> yeah. to persevere yeah. out of it. Five though. minutes later, I walked out and I said, I had a conversation with her. Five yeah. minutes, but uh, no, but you know, it's for this, the double standard, right? Because and then I talked to her about that. I'm like, God, if I walked in on you, I'd be like, I know. This be like, yeah, man, party time. Either don't make too much noise and watch, or you know, I don't know. What to yeah. Do, right? yeah. I think, no. de- I think it depends on the girl because Katrina would love that. She would, if she it would, does depend on the girl. Yeah, it depends mm-hmm. on the girl. Yeah. If she, Katrina walked in on that, she'd be like, oh shit, party time. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. They, we're starting early tonight, <laughs> huh? <laughs> do you guys ever, she, you guys don't do that together, do you? You ever watch what? Dirty shit together? Of course. Ah, okay. Yeah, no, of yeah. course. I, but you know what? I, I don't do that. I don't do that a lot. Like, I think it's, um, it's I just think, something to, to a little, ex, you know, yeah, it's different. Little yeah, I try and I try fun and, outing. I try and sprinkle it, sprinkle it in every once in a while as like something different. Because I think if what can happen to you is if you can, you get to the point where you have to do that in order for you to be aroused. I think it could I, either connect or disconnect you with someone. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, absolutely. That's yeah, what I, I mean. It, it has to be used kind of like a tool, like something that you sprinkle in there every once in a while. But if you, I mean, I think you can absolutely become addicted to it. I think yep. you can become addicted to it and then become. Spe- speaking of which, do you know what company I contacted for uh, potential sponsorship? Whoa, I'm really curious where you're going here. Yeah, because I, I, who? Um, Adam and Eve. It's this company online. Uh, yeah. We have no affiliation, it's by the way. It's all online. This is not a commercial. I have zero affiliation. Haven't even heard back from them. But they're like one of the biggest uh, retailers of, of sex toys, yeah. and I thought that would be kind of a cool, you know, deal to work out because it's you know it's part of health and it's kind of our brand a little bit. Yeah, you know, it won't work though because uh, remember I thought I told you guys this when my sister was working for like the largest like dildo company in, in the country. <laughs> what do you mean by the largest? <laughs> like yeah, the yeah. largest dildos yeah. or the or largest? The I, think, I think both yeah. actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think wow. they have, I think they have the record for both. I'll have to ask her. But when Mind Pump was first taking off. Uh, oh, I, I remember. Now. Yeah, yeah. I had her reach reach out and talk to the boss and like listen to the show, and she was like, "Oh, the show's great, but absolutely not." Like companies that are that big, they're trying to make it, it's still taboo, right? Pornography and talking about dildos. And really? That. Because I feel like like Sex with Emily, yeah. she does sex toys and stuff all the time. She does commercials. Yeah, but I, if you listen to her when she does them, I bet you it's very professional yeah. in the way she talks about it. Where yeah, knowing us, yeah, they exactly we'd be. Not. I mean, like throwing them at each other. Right, well, yeah, and we. <laughs> Look at how we do our commercials for Organifi. Fighting. I mean, we find ways to make them really inappropriate. And they're not looking for that. They're looking for, like, I think they're trying to legitimize and make it more professional. Yeah. They're not trying to make it a comedy. They don't want comedy with, when it comes to I that. Think just, I and just, I just could not I think take, I just want a discount. Could you imagine if we yeah. were... <laughs> yeah. I just want a discount. I'm trying I to get could, a discount. Getting I, bulk orders. I, I don't really think I could up. take that seriously. Like, I couldn't have a you know, a dildo company that we had to do commercials for once a week or once a month or whatever our cadence was and ha- and it have well, and it have to be it like, wouldn't be professional. Like, I also today, feel like uh, yeah, I also night. feel like women probably sell it better because uh, m- the sex toy market is female dominated, right? Women mm-hmm. are the ones that buy most of them, even the ones that are for yeah, men. We don't women need any buy. apparatuses. Is that true? I don't know that. Is it true? Bro. I imagine it is. But yeah, I mean, if you go on- just throwing that out there. No, if you go on their website, it's, I mean, the sex toys, the most of them are going to be made for women because mm. what is there for guys specifically, really? For a woman, I can understand. Like a woman, some some women never have, 
some women have their first orgasm with a vibrator because it actually is the first time they've ever been stimulated in that yeah. way. You know, guys, are, I mean, our, our, our sex organs outside of our body, and it's, it's typically not an issue, and we get pretty good with our with yeah. our hand or whatever. It'd just be like those real dolls or whatever. Like once, Gross. Yeah, right? But that's like all male-driven, you know, yeah. like that market. Yeah, and th- and that's different, isn't it? You know what I mean? I think it's a little different than like a, a an actual, I don't know. Have either one yeah. of you fucked one of them dolls? No. Uh, I no. can't say that I have. No. Doug? Doug. I, feel like, I feel like Doug. I feel like Doug has like a house full of them. Oh my god! <laughs> he just he just got a new place and it's like three yeah. bedrooms. I'm like, what do you need three bedrooms for? Doug has well, guests over again. That's uh, Suzanne's yeah. room, and this is over yeah. here. That's Jessica's room over here. I'm like, who are they? Yeah. Why is their name the same as my girlfriend, yeah. Doug? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? What's going it's, on here? She has a, she has a yeah. nose yeah. ring, yeah. And a, ta- a tattoo yeah. on her arm. Yeah. I'd be like, what the fuck? Hey, dude, how weird? Is weird. Hey, would you get hella weirded out? We go to Doug's house one time, and he's got like three rooms for girls, and they're all named like Katrina uh, and uh, Jessica uh, guy, Courtney. Sounds like a bad movie. Right? Wow. The blonde, the brunette. <laughs> you know what? I'm a pretty I'm a pretty like open minded person. Plus Doug is extremely valuable to yeah, the company, so I'd, I'd have like, to overlook it. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I'd wait it out. For I'd be a like, while. listen, be like, mm, yeah, we'd have, would, a, we'd have would, a meeting. I would measure his I'm gonna per- keep an eye on you. I would sir. measure his production off of it. Like if yeah. he's if he's been a lot more productive yeah. with it, I'd be to encourage him. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. you know. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you and Katrina Katrina could go out on a date sometime. We'd have conversations with our girls. Yeah. Just a little flirting. That's all I want you to do with yeah, him. Just a little. Just a little flirting. Just, yeah, just he's in, way more productive. Just like when he's plugged in, just encourage him yeah. a little just bit. Just a tiny bit. God, that would be creepy as hell. It would be creepy at, at, yeah. as hell just to walk in someone's house and see one of those. I know. You have know you guys I mean? ever had like a best friend or a buddy of yours that's like been into your girl and stuff and had like a weird conversation like oh, that yeah. or dealt with that? Totally. No, dude. Oh, I had really? a buddy. No. So I had oh, a good, I have. I've never had a guy tell me. I, think, I mean, I've had people tell me like my girlfriend's very oh, like, attractive. She, yeah, like she's gorgeous. But I've never had, that. I've never been like felt weird. I've had about my friend's it. dad was like, "Oh yeah, your wife is gorgeous." And I was like, <laughs> All weird like yeah, that. Yeah, and I was like, "Ew, like <laughs> beat it." You know? He's <laughs> like, like, "I will." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. Oh, 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 oh. oh man. Uh, <laughs> you, you served that one yeah, up, dude. dude. Justin's yeah. like, "That's kind of like, hot." <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. No. Yeah, that, I can't that got believe really awkward. You know who? And we still haven't released this episode. Larry Evans, our boy, dude, was like this. And oh, he, he was he was he was a such fucking, a dog. He yeah. was such a and he, he, this would just used to drive me crazy about him is the dude would be even hitting on my girl and In I front still of you. and I still loved him. Yeah, but I, he just had yeah. this ability to do that, yeah. like. It, but it, I think you it's think like it's, kind of innocent, but you, you're like, no, no, you're really oh, like seeing where this is going First of go. all, if you're a confident man, this is a yeah. good topic. If you're a very confident man and you're and you have a good relationship with your right. friend, doesn't bother if they you do it in, never worry if they do it in front of you, like yeah. if I got if there was a hidden camera or weird text message, oh, he, he would do it. That'd be different. Right. He'd do it in front totally. of me and not in front of me just yeah. as much. Like it was it was both ways. But because he does it in front of you, it's different though. Right. Because you know. Right. That's his personality. But I mean, him and I have been friends for a really long time. So. He's been with me through multiple girlfriends that I've dated, mm. and it'd always be great when they they come to tell me, yeah, because they'd come tell me. And I remember one time I was I was dating this girl Kelly at the at the, um, and we were at the club, and she was this blonde blonde girl, and she just had an amazing butt, and he was so infatuated with it, and he would always tell me. <laughs> and we're out we're out drinking and dancing one night. And you know, I'm I'm the, definitely the type of guy when I'm uh, I don't have to, I don't cling to my girlfriend like you know she could be off dancing with other guys yeah. and doing her thing at the same time that I'm in the club and I'm totally fine with that. And so she's off kind of doing her own thing, and Larry works his way over to her and stuff, and he's like whispering her in her ear and shit. <laughs> and then like 15 minutes later, she comes over to me. She goes, uh, "Do you know that your your friend just made a, a pass at me?" <laughs> I'm like, "Which friend?" Larry, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, it's totally normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew that was gonna. She's happen. like, and she's like, no, no, I mean, like, really, he really. I mean, yeah, I think yeah. if I would have said, I'm like, oh yeah, no, if you would have said yes, I'm sure he would have. Oh sure my too. god, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's my boy, yeah. all right. Yeah. No, I mean, I think if you're really confident, and I, that's now that's different. I don't know about that. I, I don't know if I actually knew that a friend of mine would do something like that. Uh, but you know, here's the, here's the bottom line. At the end of the day, a, yeah, go ahead. At the end of the day, your friend has a responsibility to not. Do something like that because I would. That's a line I would never. Oh, cross. there's guy code. Yeah, there's a line I would never cross. It still never. exists. Yeah. Never. Oh, funny. I'm very. But there's I'm, also responsibility on your girlfriend. You got to check it sometimes, yeah. which is awkward. But yeah, for the most part, if it's super innocent like that, like you just know right away, Dude. like based off the, of your friend's personality, like what's gonna come. Like my friend, he was just lazy. 
you yeah. know, like he never got out of his house. And so he would just see me like come back with like, a, you know, a hot girl. And then he'd start hitting on her too. You know, <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. Like go do your own fishing. I had a, <laughs> you know, you fucking lazy. I had an awkward situation where I was in Mexico and with friends, a bunch of friends and my buddy's wife, <clears throat> she's, she'll, she'll drink and kind of get a little crazy or whatever. Mm -hmm. And a couple times now she'll, she'll say or do something that doesn't feel it feels a little inappropriate. It's not outwardly inappropriate, but it feels that way. And you can tell everybody around is identifying that this is kind of, so we're at the pool. We're all drunk. We're all having a great time. And I'm putting lotion, uh, not lotion, uh, sunscreen on my, on my body. And she goes, Oh, can I have some of that? So I'm like, sure. So I squirt some on her hand and she starts rubbing my chest with it in front of everybody. And her husband's That's right there. intimate. And her husband's right there, dude. And he's my buddy. And I'm, I don't know what to do because I feel very awkward. <laughs> yeah. She starts making circles around your nipples. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, At the same time, you're like, I kind of like this. No, <laughs> no. You know what happens? He grabbed weird. her hand while she was doing it and pulled it away and looked at her with this look. And I was like, "Wow, this is really because I don't know what to do." Yeah, that's then the re awkward. then the rest of the time, like we acted like it didn't happen. And I'm pretty <laughs> I'm pretty sure they had a fight yeah, later I'm on that sure night. Yeah, sure. They said something last yeah that night. When yeah, dude, because that's kind of you know what I mean. Because you could tell on my face, I'm like, "What are you doing? Like, don't fucking put sunscreen it was on my funny. chest." I was talking to this about my with my wife about that. Like, what would really like you know set you off? And like, she said something funny to me. She was like, "I always pictured like if some girl was like feeding you grapes, I would lose my shit." <laughs> it's like feeding what? me grapes like, <laughs> of all the things yeah of all the things right because yeah. it's so intimate just, right. oh, you can rub you. up on it but don't you yeah, dare yeah, right? feed him grapes <laughs> she, we were watching some on TV and it was just like she'd be feeding him cheese cubes <clears throat> yeah. do you guys have the, see I'm not I am not a, I don't have a jealous bone in my body dude I just no. don't I don't here's the reason why is I think of it like this like no matter what like if she's tempted or she wants to do something like that, she's gonna fucking do it. Yeah. And if I if I get jealous about it and I try and and try and keep her from doing that, mm -hmm. I think I only will encourage that behavior. At the end of the day, yep. she's gonna do what she wants to do no matter what. So I have full like. Katrina, but that was learned. I mean, I had to go through a process of that right. of like control, control. Of like, course. And, and then you know, as I as I went through relationship to relationship, yeah, you realize right away it's like just up and honest. Like I'm. I'm going to do my thing. You're going to do your thing. Like, if you don't want to be with me, you just better tell me, mm -hmm. you know, like, right. and that's just how I've operated. I, I'm, I'm not really a, a jealous person, but there's, I can you definitely strike have, me like you would be a jealous person. I can have moments where yeah. not really jealous, it's, but I can definitely have moments where like, okay, so Jessica, especially if she puts a dress on, she just, she's just, a, she walks, she's just walking sex. She's just very walking sexy. Walking sex. I mean, she, I tell her all the time, like you give off a there lot of that sex. energy, yeah. you know, because the way <laughs> you is. move and your hips and all that stuff. And so there's been a couple times where she put on this little <clears throat> tiny dress or whatever, and she's going to go somewhere, and then I'll kind of say something, and I'll catch myself, like, ah, what are you saying? You know, but I've already said it, you know? Oh. And the way I'll say it, I'll be like, uh, and part of it is, part of it's, I'm sure part of it's insecurity, but part of it's also, I'm very, I can be very protective, and I almost yeah. feel like, yeah. well, what if someone like, you might attract the wrong attention or something, and she's very innocent, she's, so she's like, are you telling me what I can and can't wear? And I'm like, well, No. And then, you know, whatever. But, yeah, you know, I'm not typically a, a... See, that's interesting because we're different there. Like, I'm the one who... Katrina will get dressed and I'll be like, yeah, put, put something like this, put yeah, shorter shorts. Like, when you wear those really short shorts, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like... <laughs> I'm just like, serving it out yeah, there. Yeah, I, I try to make her look slutty when we go out. <laughs> it's like, you look great I'm when you somewhere in the shit. middle of you two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. I, don't know I encourage that. the fuck out yeah. of her. You know yeah. Well, here's... I just... I've, I'm one, I'm confident in our relationship and, like... I don't know when I, I've been in relationships like that where you date girls and you walk in somewhere and everybody's oohing and on and looking and whistling and hollering and I've been put in enough of those uncomfortable situations to be, get comfortable with it. Yeah. Just you know what I'm saying like now if a dude puts his hands on your girl oh, or something yeah, that, yeah. that's inappropriate and stuff and she's not the type of woman to put it out there like that. Like you can dress provocative, but if you act provocative, it's, it's totally true. different, it's right? Like it's it's one thing to look sexy and to have that sex appeal. It's another thing to be eye fucking another guy while you're yeah. looking like that. Too, and it's like okay, well, that's inappropriate. But yeah. she would she would never even fuck yeah. with those boundaries. No, so. it's funny because uh, Jessica knows me so well that the things that will bother her are the things that she knows I like in other people. Like if she saw some, just some regular, you know, hot girl talking to me, probably wouldn't bother. But if she saw some hot girl having a really good conversation with me where I'm enthralled, mm. that may bother her. Or she mm -hmm. may be like, "Ooh, she's really smart. I don't want you talk," because she knows the things that I am 
attracted to or whatever. You know, well, that's also that. that's also a reflection yeah. of their insecurities when it's like that, right? It's like, oh, I feel like it's always I it feel always inadequate is. for this because, and if he he's talking to or she's talking to someone and they're they're like that. It's always like that. I think it's so good though for the ego to be challenged that way. I think it's such a good thing. Like I, totally. I like getting put in that position. Like you go, you go talk to like the. I mean, for me, it'd be like the Matthew McConaughey guy, right? Because I always wanted to be the blonde, the blonde, oh, yeah, gold yeah, locks, yeah. like right. So yep. the surfer look guy is like talking to my girl like that. But it's, I think it's good for me. It's like, yeah. oh, you know, fuck. Check yeah, my, some, check my shit. Some movie star guy hit on hit on my wife at one time, dude, and it was like, I was like, oh, cool. You know, like that's like validation. That's a know? super it's a, compliment, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you know, like I, there was a twinge of that, like, oh fuck, you know, that guy was super handsome, you know. And so you get like, like you check yourself on that for a second. I mean, you know, almost, you, know you you want to hear what's the, the the you know what really happens a lot when we go on trips? I mean, Jessica and I, couples hit on us. That happened. That's happened actually a few. Well, you times guys, now. you guys put off the hippie swinger vibe. That's whatever <laughs> you do. Yeah, it, which is not. Which is not. We're not. I mean, I, I'm not even into that either. But sometimes I, think, I ask Katrina, "Do you want to fuck them for some reason?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just, <laughs> wow. I feel like I feel like they're putting Thanks, that off. Thanks, Adam. Right? Wow. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. No, um, I, I keep it in the family. Yeah, you know no, I mean? we're good. Yeah. Um, no, that's definitely not our our thing whatsoever. But we've gotten hit on a, a couple different times by couples, and it's kind of an, it's a very strange weird i've never experienced that where you have a couple hitting on you like what do you say are they just being friendly maybe they're just being friendly but we had this couple tell us they want to hang out hey come back to our room we'll all get in the in the hot tub and me, jessica and i are like nah yeah when you first meet cool. someone that's a little forward <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like the first, first time we hung out yeah come back to my and room it was like yes. this, it was like this good looking older couple in their kind of early 40s it looked like they had so it's kind of like they the fit dude that had a ponytail they mm, i don't remember no, no but they kind of fit that that mold right where you're like mm. oh you well look that's like a, i think that's a thing where you like on vacation you think we give, yeah we were you think we give off a swinger vibe <laughs> yeah, yes. it's the natural oils and hippie side of uh, you guys that's what it is is shitty. it really yeah it's the hippie side because <laughs> yeah. that's part of that culture. <laughs> wearing suits everywhere. that's part of that culture right is yeah. the free love and free everything and so i think you guys put off a a hippie vibe and you're good looking and fit yeah. and you're into your bodies so absolutely, if I was a swinger and I was on, I absolutely, I'm trying to fuck you guys, hundred percent. Like that's, if I'm at, a, stop saying we, you guys, huh? <laughs> I feel like you're trying to have sex with me too. Well, yeah. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what swinging that's would be. That's another level. That's what yeah. swinging would be. I mean, if we're in there, we're doing it with both you guys. I mean, you're in the room too, right? Yeah. The hell that gets down. Yeah, they're, they're oh. dosy doing. I think yeah. when yeah, when another couple invites you back to their hotel room, there's no. I mean, that's oh, a man. that's a four way, not a yeah. like a there's, take turns. Like oh, you go man. sit outside for a while Turn with my your wife. Partner dose. Do no, that's a weird. Yeah, that's a. Uh, I'm not cool with around. that. Do you remember the last the last thing that Jessica did that made you that got you upset or that made you feel insecure? A little or that, bit insecure. Yeah. It was a while ago. She was. What did she do? She went on a uh, a trip <clears throat> to San Diego with her friend, and they were going to get a. Uh, they were going to do like a, a hostel. They were going to sleep in a hostel, and mm. but it was it was like an, a room with like five beds. So her and her friend, and then three other random people were going to be in there and it kind of part of it was the safety issue like well that's mm -hmm. kind of that kind of, that might not be too safe and the other part of it was kind of like some drunk dudes are going to come home after you know late night of partying and you're all going to be in the same room so i kind of had an issue with it and it wasn't a big issue it was a little bit of an issue though and i could tell i could feel it inside myself that was feeling a little bit jealous you know what I mean? happened from it nothing she she the safety issue was the one that she 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 didn't do the hostel because after i made the the safety issue uh, point which after I admitted like okay well yeah I'm being a little jealous but it is kind of a not a safe thing to do and then it dawned on her and she said yeah I guess we'll just get a room just the two of us um, but that was it it was just a conversation it what wasn't like you? crazy what about you Justin um, I think uh, she Courtney plans a trip every now and then to go to Cabo with like her girlfriends and I had to check myself a little bit just about um, um, you know like uh, basically having her there just whatever doing what i had to just like be free with like yeah you do your thing like i'll do my thing usually i'm not, i don't have a problem with it um but i guess i didn't know any of the other girls like she went with this like whole new set of girl friends that she just met and so it was like a new thing that um she got herself like a new set of friends because we're, we're living you know in in scotts valley now and meeting new people with you know moms groups and st stuff like that so i just was a little bit uncertain as to like you know the vibe of of the group and everything but then did i just you, got over it did you catch yourself or did she have to check you no i caught myself oh you caught yourself i caught being. myself yeah because it 
it, it, it it raised a little bit of the uncertainty. Like that started to come back to me and it was a safety thing too on, on, yeah. on the end of it being like, well, okay, where are you guys exactly staying? Like who's, you know, like how are you going to ch- check in with me? All this kind of shit that mm-hmm. you just go through. But yeah, I, I've learned to like, so now this is becoming like a regular trip mm-hmm. for her with these girls. And it's great because it always, she always comes back more refreshed and more energetic and like good. more about the it's relationship. You know, it's like we need, it's so, so healthy to do that. Oh, it's a good I, thing. I say this all the time. I think it's so important. It's like, I mean, I know it's cliche to say abstinence makes the heart grow fonder, but there's truth to that. Yeah. And you know, when you, when, especially when you've been Wait, in a relationship. Absence or abstinence? Abstinence. Yeah, abstinence. <laughs> okay. That's what I said. Okay. Okay. No, yeah, I don't know. Either which way. One. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. both work. Yeah. Right. Say. <laughs> yeah. Absence and abstinence. Yeah. yeah. Right. <clears throat> right. So I think, I think that doing that, especially when you've been in a relationship for as long as you have with Courtney or I have with Katrina, when you're talking about that many years, you know, you get used to that same person waking up with you and all the little things that they do that are so amazing are are not that amazing to you anymore because you, you now- You take it for granted. You do. You take it for granted. Yeah. And when they're gone and away for three or four or five days in a row, and I tell Katrina this every time, that's one of my favorite parts about traveling with Mind Pump. And mm-hmm. I know she doesn't like it because we, we miss each other with that, but that's what I love about it is- when I go, it always reminds me of how much I appreciate sure. yep. you being around me for all the sure. time. So for sure, and so it, important. For sure, it makes a big. And you know, to be honest, a hundred percent honest. Like, I mean, I can only speak for myself. I'm not necessarily. First off, I value my autonomy and freedom tremendously. Obviously, it's like one of my personal themes. And so, if I ever feel like I'm being controlled or checked on or whatever, especially because I don't, I'm not doing anything wrong. It definitely can make me want to run in the opposite direction. I don't like that, and I and because I value it so much, it helps me check myself if I start to feel if I start to feel jealous or whatever. I think to myself like, okay, I wouldn't like it in return. Yeah, and that helps me. That helps me check it a little bit. Justin, but, what about the environment at the hospital? Like, I feel like that there, you never had like a you never like yeah. you go over coming to work and your wife introduces you like the new doctor <laughs> yeah. and he's like, I mean, fuck, there's some handsome. He's doctors. like 35, super sure. hot, drives a badass whip. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Well, you know, it's funny too, like some, like she'll get some, some 18 year old, you know, guys coming in that are like, you know, have had like a sports injury or something. And it's like, you know, and she has to deal with cleaning them and like, oh, no. all this stuff. <laughs> so there's, there's been issues, you know what I'm saying? And there's been some guys that like, they, they fall in love with her, you know, and like, after, after they've cleaned it, she's cleaned their job. Well, not just something. that, but like. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, she, she's very friendly. Keep scrubbing like, it. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, I knew there had to be some hospital stuff, dude. I'm like, come on, bro. That's like the worst. You hospital- know, it doesn't even bother me, though, because uh, I don't know. I guess with her, my relationship with her is, is totally different than any other girl that I've even like dated. So it was like established from day one. Like, it, so if there's any inkling to that, it's it's like we're done. You know, like, so yeah. that doesn't even exist in our relationship. But at the same time, it's fun. It's kind of funny because she does tell me the stories of like, you know, some guys like saying some inappropriate shit or, you know, a dad in the room with them and saying some shit, you know, in Spanish, but she understands Spanish. <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah. Like, oh, wow. And she doesn't know, look she, like a girl that would understand Spanish. Exactly. She's, yeah. So she's been able to kind of identify some creeps and shit. And so sometimes I'll actually go in there and just make my presence known. If like, I've done that a few times. Like, oh really? Yeah. So like, the, like for instance, for like that high on the husband. Yeah. Like the, the, there was a, a dad that, I killed kittens that was weekend. like, you know, he was saying some inappropriate shit, you know? And so I just like introduced myself to him and, and, and brought her coffee and shook his hand and shit and made eye contact with him. I'll do stuff like that every now and then. Yeah. That's a patient or is that someone who works there? This was a, a patient's dad that was in the room she works watching in the, the kids. She, so works she works in the works pediatric. The pediatric. Mm. So, yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm going to let this motherfucker know that I exist and what mm. I look like and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's just every now and then you got to kind of, uh, you know, let it be known. The thing about The thing about cheating that devastates people so much isn't even the cheating aspect of it it's that you were so convinced that you knew someone you were so what you feel fooled that you knew someone because you talk to people who are devastated because i know people who've been cheated on but they kind of expected it and it still sucks and they're pissed off but it's not the same as like people who get cheated on by someone they thought would never do that 
Like it would be like if I it would be like if one of you guys murdered someone. I'd be like, I know them. This is that doesn't make sense. Like it doesn't make sense that they would ever do that. Yeah. It blows it, it blows your whole belief or understanding of well, I think yourself. That, I think it's I don't know if it's as much as that as it is different for I think it's different for men and women. You know what 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 bothers them more about that? Oh I mean, no, they've done studies on that. Yeah, I think so. It, men would men are would be uh, men are more likely to be upset with a woman having sex and less likely if she falls in love. So they'll do these these studies where they ask people, what would be worse if your partner had sex with someone but they didn't love them, or if they fell in love with someone but didn't have sex with them and right. didn't have any yeah. physical contact? Men <clears throat> men would feel worse with the sex. Mm-hmm. Women would feel worse with the love, and it's pretty makes, makes clear. Perfect sense, and yeah. it's pretty clear. Oh yeah, for sure. If Katrina came up to me and she's like, "I, I, I met this guy. He's just amazing, and I'm in yeah, love, and this yeah. and that." We've and never I, done anything. And I go like, "Yeah." She goes, "You know, we've never hooked up or anything like that, but I'm just coming to you first. I'd be devastated like that. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> just or I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't oh, bother yeah. as much as if she were to come and say to me. I fucked this guy, right? Yeah. She just fucked some guy. <laughs> some yeah. random guy. Right, some random right. guy on some random trip. That would bother me more totally. than if it was some dude. So let's unpack that for a second. Like, why Why does one bother men more and why does one bother women more? And and I've read some articles on this and there's a lot of theories. And one of them, which makes, which feels like it makes the most sense to me, is for men, if you know that your partner, your female partner, is just having casual sex, that bothers you because A... Uh, a man never fully knows, at least evolutionarily speaking, never fully knows if, if offspring are his. Mm. So that's an important thing that where men would be very protective, like make sure that the offspring is mine. So that's number one. Number two, let's be totally honest here. If a woman who's not horrendously unattractive just wants to have sex, <clears throat> she could do it pretty much whenever she wants. It's way easier for a woman. Mm-hmm. So knowing that as a man, that your girl... So we'll just have casual sex. It's almost like a, a mirror of deficiency on your end, yeah, right? It's yeah. like, what am I doing wrong? I don't, <clears throat> and then the other part for women is like, it's the resources thing. Like, well, if he loves someone else, then he's not going to pr- provide for me. He's not going to support me. He's not going to be there. Because the random sex that my 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 spouse has, my, my husband or my boyfriend has, I know he loves me and he'll take care of me. And so that's kind of the that's what the theory is behind. That's that. interesting. I think it would be it's got to be different for each person, right? I think if there's always that variance. If Katrina fell in love with a guy, I'd be more interested to meet him because I'm like, I'm probably gonna really like this guy. <laughs> you know say like we're probably gonna be friends. Like this. What if he's the opposite? Awesome. What if he's the opposite? She's been with me for a long time. I'm a fucking really cool person. If she found uh, someone who's cooler than I am, like, wow. I gotta like he's him. He's gotta be cool. Yeah, he's gotta be fucking cool. What like, would he, you do if it was like just the opposite of what you thought? It's just some fucking scrub, dude. Would you lose total respect? Uh, uh, yeah, I'd be disappointed in her. Yeah. If she didn't level up, I'd be mad. Uh, yeah, like I mean, right. he's got. That's what I mean. Like I, 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 I expect her because she's a catch and she's badass. If she leaves me for someone else, he'd better be fucking the next level. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like he, I better meet him and go like, God damn, I want to hang out with this dude. Mm-hmm. Like I could learn something. Have you, know you ever- saying like, or I, <laughs> I really like him. You know, he's a lot of fun or he's funny. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> be friends. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, you ever- know what, dude? That would just piss her off, dude. That's why it'd be like a uh, double win for me. Have him be on like, the show. Son of a bitch! I try to get rid of this guy. Now they're yeah. best friends. He's working for me now. Have you ever, have you ever felt like jealousy or anything with her or a little insecurity? Has there ever been an issue? Because they've been um, together for a long time. Yeah, no, we've been together for a long time. The only time I think, and <clears throat> obviously she would probably be the best one to ask, uh, ask this question to, but I don't think so. I think the only times I've ever been frustrated or upset uh, with her with something like that, it's more because maybe she just made me feel that way like a week or two before. You know, like maybe she was just giving me grief because, um, you know, uh, I, the way I, you know, put my arm around a girl, I put it like mid or lower back, and it's like she's giving me shit for something like that, right? And, give, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. Like, really? Those are two totally separate things, right? Right, yeah. exactly, right. You're sending a total different message, or you're such a flirt about put things. Put my hand on her butt. So what? if she's <laughs> <laughs> whatever, if she's giving, if she was giving me grief about the way I am a- around a female, and then. I catch her doing something similar. I think that's the only time I get, and it's not me upset because she's doing that. It's more like, Hey, see, you're just like me. You know what I'm saying? When you're talking to a male like that, like you're putting off that vibe and I'm not bothered by it, but it bothers me that you're just like me and you do similar Mm -hmm. shit and you're giving me grief about it too. Like, Relax. I mean, yeah. we live together. We see each yeah. other every day. Like, I'm coming home to you. Yeah. I don't want her. That is my personality. I'm like, so I've never been like, she's never, now, I'm sure she would defend herself and be like, well, I'm not that way. And I don't, you know, I'm not constantly around, you know, men like you are. But she knows she's in a construction type job now where, 
she's got i mean she's like a super minority i mean you're talking it's about all men all men it's yeah. and it's all like construction inappropriate there's a lot dudes. Of, there's a lot of testosterone yeah there, bro. i 100 yeah. percent know she i mean she sometimes she talks to me about it like but i don't even i'm not the type of like boyfriend or fiance husband type of guy to be even like inquiring about it i know it it's like mm -hmm. you work in an environment i've worked in that environment before i know what it's like i know the conversations we're having when we're framing and we're fucking pouring concrete and we're doing stuff with a bunch of buddies that are drinking beer after work every day i know the types of conversation we're in and then i know what it would be like when the one girl in the entire company is also hot <laughs> mm -hmm. right. and she's fucking she's you know what happens though in a power position but like, you know what happens because i've been in situations mm -hmm. like that you know what happens is if the woman like maintains her assertiveness and confidence at first the guys will push and then after a while she ends up becoming like everybody's little sister or everybody's you know what i mean you just get a bunch of yeah, guys yeah well that, very that's protective. not that doesn't happen in this situation it because doesn't, she's, she's a, the boss so she's not the little sister you know what i'm saying she if anything she, if she rules in any role it would be mom or the oh, okay. boss lady you oh, know what i'm saying see, so there so she she's not getting people feeling like she's a little sister or if anything but yeah, at the end of the day like i know it happens i know it happens i know it's part of the job yeah. i know that's what it yeah. comes with the territory it doesn't bother me though but well, you, you know you got to be you got to appreciate the, the the truth and the reality is that you know given our situation we're not necessarily easy men to to be with if you really have to if you really think about it it's not a it's not a common situation we work yeah. in the fitness industry which Number one, if you're an insecure woman dating a man who's in fitness, who's either a trainer, a trainer. Oh, yeah. working in a gym, training women, especially if the guy's kind of fit or buffed or whatever, like that alone is kind of a, a challenge. I know a lot of women who have said oh. to me up front, I would never date a personal trainer. How I many clients have you had that had to stop training with you because their significant other stopped it? Not too many, but I've had a lot of them I've tell me that their spouses- like Two or three. I've, yeah, I've had a lot of them tell me that their spouses had an issue at first. You guys remember when I posted the stats that they did, a, I think it was Men's Health or it was one, I, I can't remember where I read the article. This was a couple of years ago. I posted so it's them. the number one? Oh, it's, yeah, it's number one. Hospitals are number two. And the, uh, I think 72%, it was, it was a really high number of trainers yeah. have slept with clients. Yeah. So imagine being a woman who's dating a trainer in that position and knowing that the odds- <laughs> Justin married his. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we defied all the odds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like so, I mean, hospital and gym. Yeah, absolutely. You're in a, a, a real- I mean, again, too, I think this is also why honesty and being straightforward about things like I was- But it's not It's not a common situation because we are in fitness. Then on top of it, we're you know, kind of public personas on social media- we're still in the fitness industry, even though we run a, a media company, which means we and we travel a lot. And then you'll have, you know, followers and fans and listeners of the show. And you know, and, and when you're when people view you in that particular way, they tend to not respect boundaries as much. Like when a woman sees a celebrity guy that she has a crush on, even though she may know he's married, she may feel like it's not a big deal to tell him, "Oh my God, you're so hot, I love you," or "I'll do this to you." Like because there's like it's different because it's a celebrity. You know what I'm saying? And so. It's a hard, it's, you got to appreciate the, the challenge. And then on top of it, I can, I can speak for myself. I'm a very talkative individual. I'll talk to people. I'll have a good time with them. And that can be challenging too. If you're dating me and you see me at a party, I'm going to strike up conversations with people and men and women, and it may come across as flirting. I don't necessarily consider myself a flirty person, but I'm definitely, you know, I like to talk to people. And so it's, you got to appreciate that. It is, it is a bit of a challenge. It can be. A bit of a challenging situation. You have to be a, a confident person. No, it's mm -hmm. it, it, it's very challenging. I think it, it takes a very unique woman to be okay with all that, and mm -hmm. very confident woman. You have to Definitely. be. You can't be. And I, you know, I went through. There's that. no way you could date an ins like a really no. insecure. Yeah, yeah no, I dated all. Work. I dated a ton of them in my twenties, yeah. and I saw where it all. Went. Imagine but, now. Yeah. Imagine dating one of those women now. Yeah, it would just never happen. That was something that I mean, I learned. I learned by the time I got b even before thirty, but as I started to get closer to my thirties, that just this is who I am. This is mm -hmm. the type of person I am. Like hundred percent. I'm a flirtatious person. I do communicate with women all the time. I 80% of my clients are women like yeah. and yes, there's times where they're inappropriate things. That's just that it, it is what it is. And I love my job and I love doing it and I, and I like my personality and I'm not trying to change it for anybody, you know? So that if I think if you can communicate that early on and let me tell you, that conversation fucking turned a lot of girls off. Like and there's yeah. people listening right now they're like, "Fuck that. I would never yeah. want to be with a guy like that." That's fine. I wasn't meant for you. You know what I'm saying? I like, actually I'm meant for the girl that like I was meant for the woman that like that didn't bother and that was is secure about that because she's confident in herself. Jessica that, actually had a friend, I think one or two friends who tell her like, "Oh, I could never date Sal." 
I could never date him. Why? Well, because of what his job is and this mm. and that, and he's in fitness. Yeah, like, people fuck have told you, man. That too. Yeah. Have they said that to her? Yeah, and always like, if you check up on him all the time and like make sure, you know, it's yeah. like, no, we don't, I don't do that to her. She doesn't do that to me. It's just not, it's not something we do. You know, I trust her. She trusts me. That's it. That's all we have to say. Yeah, and, and it's funny too because it's almost like, it's counterproductive. I, I, when you feel if somebody feels like they're being crowded or controlled, I that may that may make them more distant, which yeah. may make it more likely for them to you know to want to leave or whatever. Right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's that. I don't know. Anyway, it's a fun industry to be in, but I could definitely see how it's uh, how it can be a challenging one. So. Oh yeah, no, Justin. Have you ever have you ever had like gotten that point with uh, with uh, Courtney where you grab her phone and you start going through all her stuff or been like that? Has she or has she ever been that way with you? Uh, no, no, never. I think, um, I, she will show it to me or vice versa. Like I will show it to her if I feel like this weird feeling like, Ooh, the, this is something that like, if she sees it on my phone, like it's like, I actually had a little bit of reserve one time cause I didn't know it was like in my photos and stuff like in videos, like, and, um, I had this weird, like old flashback of like a girlfriend that was like crazy like that, that would do that you know, all the time would like check up on me and see who I'd been talking to and all this kind of stuff. And, and then I just was like, Oh yeah, no, it's not like that. She just wants to like take my photos and then like bring them over to her phone to see, you know, what kind of cool pics I had. Mm. But it's like, yeah, I don't know, man. We've had, we've just had basically like I'm an open book. Like, so if you want to go through it and, and if I feel sometimes maybe I've, I have flirted and, you know, and I've, and I've just talked in a certain way to girls or whatever. And like, but she's just like, you know, I know, I know how you talk and interact. And so it doesn't bother her, thankfully Mm -hmm. to where, but yeah, I I feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more me. Like I'll be like, Oh shit. Like I, I feel kind of gross that, you know, I was like really like checking this girl out online, like a lot, like frequently, like it'll pop up and like their stories first. And he's like, Oh, her story's first again. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of shit. And I'm like, Oh, and then I like think about, Oh, I should just, you know, calm down a little bit. You know, know, and the reality, the reality is uh, out of context. If you, if look, if you were to be able to spy on your girls and them talking with their girlfriends and you were able to listen to everything they said for a week. Some point they're going to say something's going to make you uncomfortable, and it won't be outwardly bad. That's why just, I don't. That's why I don't this is it, just how people that's talk. Why I've never cared. Like I don't. It's like, just I've, how people talk. And, I've never, I've never ever picked up Katrina's phone and ever had a desire to look at, it. knowing damn well that the environment she works in, knowing damn well that we, I have, there's male friends that have messaged her that I know damn yeah. well that want to sleep with her. I don't want to know. I don't yeah. care. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, she's in my bed every single night. You know what I'm saying? Like well, that's she's, the thing. I come home to her every day. Like she sees me every day. Like those conversations to me it's just it's so small in the grand scheme of things when it comes to when you look at the big picture of the relationship that i i trust her as a whole mm-hmm. even if i trust her as a whole even if small parts of conversations that would bother me or get to me it's like that's why i don't even want to why do i want to put myself in that situation mm-hmm. to even let it fuck with me when i know it's not going to change the relationship the, the way i the way i look at it unless somebody's pal- pathological right because there's always a situations where there's people that are just straight up psychopaths or, or just sociopaths but for most normal people it, when someone gets to the point where they if someone's doing that and they're cheating there's been a lot of signs and signals that you ignored leading yeah. up to that and i don't mean signs and signals of them cheating i mean signs and signals that your relationship was not yeah, good they're just very distant yeah that you're just you're just you've been ignoring i think a lot of times that's the case i don't think every time i'm sure there's cases where it's completely out of the blue but many times most times when you ask somebody you know if you look back in time were there signs that your relationship was oh, heading in the wrong direction? I've told you guys, I yeah. mean, the, the last relationship I was in before Katrina, it was the first female ever to cheat on me. And it, you know, I was, people ask all the time, like, oh my God, were you devastated or this or that? I said, no. Were you angry? And I was like, well, maybe initially, like when I first got the news, like it was heavy and it pissed me off. I think I put a hole through my, my door. But it, like literally after I kind of got that out of my system, you know, I calmly actually called her and said, hey, come over, pick your shit up, you know, get it out of my house. And like, that was it. And I was over it. And a lot of that, because from that moment on, like the punching the the wall was the feeling sorry for myself part. Then the moment after that of calling her to come get herself and her on her way was the reflection part 
Where did I, what did I do in this relationship to deserve that or get that? And when I'm when I'm completely honest with myself, because most people can't, I didn't do anything to deserve this. Oh my God, They're like I can't believe you did that. I would never do this to you. Well, you know, I was very distant. I was burying myself into work. I wasn't there emotionally. I wasn't there physically a lot of the time. Like, you know, I you you could tell that I was checked out in other ways. So she checked out in another way. So it's mm-hmm. like who I, to me it was. I, I got. You know what's funny about that? Your ability to do that probably helped you get over it a lot better than oh, yeah. somebody who didn't do that. Like no. if you weren't doing that, you, you it would be it would be painful for a long period of time. I never. I I've never been somebody like that. That when a relationship ends, where like I go through this depression for like three months or six months. Like in fact, it's just like it's like anything else. It's like making a mistake. It's like failing in a business. It's like anything else that we deal in mm. life. This relationship failed. Mm-hmm. There's a part of me that owns part of that. It's it, we're, no matter what. Even if she cheated, it's not all her fault because she cheated. It's like I, this is a partnership. It's a relationship. I yeah. own some part of that. Where is the lesson in this? What can I learn from this? Then How do you I can carry that forward yeah. into the next? And then one the next. So you don't one, repeat I'm a, the process. Right. It usually died before that happened. Uh, there was something that you know what I mean. It, it, again, you can look back. It's like your health. Like when a major health issue pops up. If you look back, usually it's not out of the blue. Usually it's like, oh, well, I had years of heartburn, years of poor digestion, right. years of inflammation. Like, you know, I just didn't, I was just ignoring the signs. You know? yeah. It's like when, when I got, you know, when I got divorced, and this was a long time coming, of course, and it was mutual, it was shortly after. It was, it was shortly after that I met Jessica and that we really fell in love with each other. And I'm like, this is going to look bad because. She's people are going to think that this is a girl that I was with before I left, which wasn't the case at all. In fact, we barely knew each other, and it was was you know I think a month after that we hung out, and then I realized, oh my god, I'm having feelings for someone. And the funny thing is, is I was kind of hiding it for a little while because I knew how it would sound, especially to my ex who were trying to do this amicably, we're trying to do this mutually, and I don't want her to think I left because. I met someone else because I felt like, oh, that's going to complicate things. We share two children, this, that, and the other. So I didn't tell anybody. And then I think I was with you guys when this happened. Mm. My kid is my mom went to pick up my kids from school, and she grabs my son's phone or something like that, and she goes, "There's these weird text messages on his phone." Remember when I told you guys? Yeah. This? yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "What?" I'm like, "Send me the screenshot of it." And I'm thinking. Maybe the from my phone. Maybe we all connected our on, on the you know the what is it called the cloud, and maybe he uploaded some of my texts. And then I got kind of worried because some of the messages that you know like shit that I'll send with people is like oh my god inappropriate for kids, right? So she sends them to me, and they're like these flirting texts, and they weren't mine. So I'm like this is fucking weird, and I'm like keep scrolling down and tell me what's on there. Well, it was my it was my ex. She had met someone and started dating someone shortly after as well. So that comes out and it made it a lot easier. Cause then I confronted her. I'm like, look, this came up on, you know, our son's phone. Obviously you need to be careful because, you know, luckily nothing inappropriate came through. You could tell through the text. It wasn't someone that she'd been dating for a while. You could tell it was like the beginning of something. Right. right. And again, our marriage ended a good seven to 10 years before we actually divorced. So it's not like, both of us got out of a, a marriage and then jumped into a new relationship. We were already basically, you know, uh, roommates for a long time anyway. So seeing that, confronting her with that, then it was like, cool, because now I, you can know about my relationship. You can't right. come down on me about it. I feel like you could share this now. Yeah, and it, it actually helped the process along because it, had she not dated anybody or had it been the flip, it would have been very easy to be – not understanding. It would have been very easy to be like, you were fu- you were cheating on me this entire time, but both of us are like, okay, we're both in a similar situation, right. mm. so we're going to be cool about it. And I think it kind of it kind of worked out. And we're both still dating the people that we you know we're talking to, so it was all all good, all meant to be. That's it. Mm-hmm. Check this out. We have uh, a bunch of free guides. We have one for flabby arms, flat tummies, hit training guide. We have got a couple, calves, legs, calves, legs, chest, like how to build a chest. They're well-written guides that we could sell, but we're not. They're free. No, we're hooking you up. They're totally free. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Get any of those guides or all of them at zero cost. Also, you can find us on Instagram. My page is Mind Pump Sal. Justin is Mind Pump Justin, and Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. 
The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.